The United States has had a continuous presence in Iraq since its 2003 invasion. Though in 2011, all US combat forces had left, thousands of troops returned in 2014 in order to help the Iraqi government defeat the Islamic State. An estimated 2,500 US troops are deployed in Iraq today, in addition to some 900 in Syria. Since the Israel-Hamas war broke out on October 7th last year, American military installations have been struck more than 60 times in Iraq and over 90 times in Syria by Iran-backed militants. A mix of drones, rockets, mortars and ballistic missiles have been used for these attacks in retaliation to United States support of Israel in its war against Iran-backed Palestinian militant group Hamas. On the 20th of January, in the most serious attack this year, Kateb Hezbollah fired multiple ballistic missiles at Ain al-Assad air base in western Iraq. Four US personnel suffered injuries and a member of Iraq's security forces was seriously injured in this attack launched from inside Iraq. Al-Assad is a large air base in Iraq's western desert where US troops have trained Iraqi security forces and now coordinate operations to counter the threat posed by the Islamic State. In a retaliatory strike four days later, the US CENTCOM forces conducted airstrikes against three facilities used by Kateb Hezbollah and other Iran-affiliated groups in Iraq. These strikes targeted Kateb Hezbollah headquarters, storage and training locations for rocket, missile and one-way attack UAV capabilities. The US retaliatory attack killed a Kateb Hezbollah fighter, triggering calls for US forces to leave. A couple of days later, the two governments announced plans to begin talks to wind down the mission of a US-led military coalition in Iraq. The US says the talks were first discussed last year and the timing is not related to the attacks. I think the HMC meeting um, is not a negotiation about the withdrawal of US forces in Iraq. It is about the what the future looks like for the US and Iraqi uh, bilateral relationship. So part of the factors that we're taking into consideration, the ISF's capabilities, the operational environment, and then of course the threat of ISIS, those are all going to be part of these conversations on exactly what, um, what our footprint looks like within Iraq. Um, and that's what this working group is for. There's no timeline set. And again, this is, these meetings are not about um, a negotiation or a withdrawal from Iraq. Though the United States denies it, the timing is suspect, since the Iraqi officials have periodically called for a withdrawal of coalition forces for years, especially after the killing of Iranian general Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi militia leader Abu Mehdi al-Muhandis. In a U.S. airstrike in January 2020 outside the Baghdad airport, compounding matters for the U.S. is the belligerence of the Iran-backed Houthis, who have targeted Israeli-owned, flagged or operated ships or ships heading to the Israeli ports since November last year. In response, the U.S. and U.K. have carried out multiple rounds of airstrikes on the Houthi targets in Yemen. But the Houthis have remained defiant and the attacks on vessels have persisted. On the 25th of January, Members of the Bani al-Harith tribe, supporters of the Houthis, held a rally in the north of Sana'a, showcasing their arms and announcing their readiness for a confrontation. We say to America, Israel and Britain, you will not occupy Yemen nor Palestine. We will sink you, your battleships and your ships in the sea. This Yemeni people will make a graveyard for the invaders. We are ready to confront wherever they want, on land and at sea, as we are on the lookout for them. Given the impending eventual reduction of US forces raises questions about sustainability of US counter-Islamic state mission in Syria as well. Is the US's announcement its first step to avoid the risk of being